The, um, the very familiar words that we hear from Corinthians tonight are so familiar because we hear them nearly every Sunday here, and they are these. Jesus took a loaf of bread and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup also and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. We hear these words so often and sometimes we tend to sort of glance over them without thinking what they mean. Corinthians in this reading is unique in the way that it expresses these words First of all, it's unique because it is the very earliest statement of the words of Jesus at the Passover dinner. The letter to the Corinthians was written somewhere in the early 50s by the Apostle Paul. And although Matthew, Mark, and Luke also repeat these words, those were not written till probably 15 or at least 20 years later. So, Paul is unique in expressing these words for the very first time. The other thing that's unique about these words of Paul is what comes right after these words, where Paul describes what we do when we participate in this meal. These are Paul's words. For as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want to suggest three important things about these particular words from Paul. First of all, they could mean simply that we as Christians remind ourselves and remind one another of the death and resurrection of Jesus by partaking in this meal. And that certainly is a part of what we do in sharing the Eucharist together. Second, it can also mean that we as Christians prepare ourselves for this meal, for the missionary proclamation of the gospel, of the words of Christ to the world around us. And this is certainly another part of the meaning of these words. But I would like to suggest a deeper meaning than these words, and it's this. Let's hear Paul's words again. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. These words don't appear in any of the Gospels. These are Paul's words alone. So I would like to suggest that in the present time, just as for centuries before us, when we come together at someone's death and memorial to walk with them to the brink of heaven, that we are actually proclaiming their death. We're not only proclaiming their death, we are proclaiming their death by remembering their life. How many funerals and memorial services have you been where the subject is almost always what that person's life was about, what made that person stand out and be loved by all of those around him? So I think we are proclaiming things about Jesus that made Jesus unique. That's what these words, I believe, mean. I think that Paul is saying that Jesus was telling his disciples on this night, I want you to celebrate my life by remembering what we did together. So Paul is telling the Corinthians that by partaking of this meal, they are celebrating the good news that they now can spread to the world and can continue to spread to the world, that they are basking in the light of Jesus unique contribution to the world and to all of history. Proclaim my death by proclaiming my life. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? We fully believe that God sent us Jesus to save us from our sin, but I hope I do not engage in heresy if I suggest something else. And that is that if God's only purpose in sending the incarnate body of Christ into the world was to save us from our sin, he could have emailed that in. He didn't need to have Jesus wandering the face of the earth for three years showing us who Jesus is and was. 
and the disciples learned from that and then taught that to those who followed them. We would not even have to have the gospel stories of Jesus' ministry unless it was important for us to hear about Jesus' life. There must be some meaning to the things that Jesus did that brought him to his death. There must be some purpose to all of the news of healing and restoration and rejuvenation and forming relationships. There must be some purpose to the stories of Jesus' challenges to authority and to power and depression. So what was it about Jesus' life and ministry that was so meaningful? Why was it that he had to give his body up to death? What was it about him that made him so despised by the people who took his life? It's clear that Jesus and his followers posed a threat to the Roman society because Jesus made people secure without that society. He taught them that they did not need that society to exist as human beings. And he created kinds of relationships that could not be in a, accomplished in a society ultimately based on domination and fear. So he had to be eradicated. Although God had been acting in the world for an infinite time before Jesus came to earth, Jesus was God's firsthand communication of God's self to the world. What Jesus did in the world is God. It is God acting in the world. Society tried to kill God by killing Jesus. When we share this meal, we share with each other the remembrance of that fact. Society failed at that attempt. That's why we proclaim Christ's death until he returns. And so we are joined with other Christians who celebrate that that act of killing is not the end of the story, is it? Because as Paul says, what we are doing when we proclaim the Lord's death is the next step, proclaiming Christ's death until a certain time, the time at which he returns. And that is the rest of the story, which lands us in the future, the fruition of the kingdom in Christ's return. So tonight, we remember Jesus' solidarity with the blind and the lame and the poor and the outcast. And by his mission and by his travels and by his relationships, Jesus showed us what the world should really look like, but what those in power could not stand for it to look like. And because he did, he was put to death. But his death was not the end, and that is where we come into the picture to proclaim that death and that life until he returns. So if we accept that, the next question becomes this. Why is it important that proclaiming his death until he comes was signified by sharing a meal together? First of all, I think it was because meals were a big deal to Jesus. If he hadn't walked so much, I know he'd been way overweight uh, because we hear so many stories about him eating and it was always bread. So, you know, there's something to that, right? What was going on was that Christ was teaching us through the meals about love and acceptance of others and teaching us about his acceptance of us. And those lessons were often communicated through participation in meals. Stories of Christ dining with outcasts and lowlifes and sinners and tax collectors are all through the Gospels. But it was really about Jesus caring for them, identifying with the least of these, sharing a few loaves and a couple of fishes with what turned out to be several thousand people. So the ones who shared this meal on the night before Jesus' death included two people who Jesus knew would betray him. First of all, there was Peter. 
We've been doing a six-week Lenten series on the life of Simon Peter, and it's been really fun seeing how often Simon Peter didn't understand Christ until Christ's death and resurrection and wasn't even there at the foot of the cross, but yet Peter became the foundation and the rock upon which the church was built. And then, of course, there was Judas, who betrayed, who betrayed Jesus by taking money to secure his death. But Jesus still shared a meal, the most important meal of his ministry with them. This was the same thing Jesus had been doing through his entire ministry, demonstrating his love for people, no matter what their condition. And there's a message to us in that. Jesus shows his love to us no matter what our condition. Just as we are included when we fall short as well. So tonight, when you come to this table, you'll be tasting a portion of a loaf that was created for this world that actually becomes the body of Christ. And just like Christ's incarnate body, this loaf will be prayed over for shaping by the Holy Spirit and will be torn and will be handed over and then will be consumed. And as I think of the significance of this meal that we share, I'm reminded of how many times this same sacrament is being shared around the world tonight by others just like us in so many ways the body of Christ proclaiming the significance of the life of Jesus. But I'm also reminded of this fact. Just since I have been a part of this portion of the body of Christ here at St. Luke's during the past seven months that I've been a part of you in this parish, if we take the average number of parishioners on a Sunday and we multiply that by the average number of steps, to this altar rail. I have personally witnessed over 19,000 steps toward this holiest of holy spots, which is extremely significant and a powerful reminder to all of us that we embrace those around us with all of our own beauty or all of our own warts, all of our own gains and losses and all of our own joys and sorrows, we still embrace, embrace each other. So the result of these steps is that we strengthen our union with Christ and our union with one another. And we get maybe just a foretaste of that heavenly banquet that is our nourishment and will be our nourishment in eternal life. And it is through these steps that we get the strength to be in love and charity and communion with one another. That in and of itself is the miracle of the meal that we share together. So we will share together these bits of bread and tonight they really are bits of bread. It's gonna be fun. And we will also sip the wine and this will speak to us of the utter joy of our hope and our identity as part of this community and part of the community of Christians around the world. And as we do this, we share the gift of the Holy Spirit, which illuminates the world around us and grants us a new beginning for every day, no matter how the previous day ended up, which by itself gives us courage and strength beyond our other very meager resources. And as we share, we pray, be with us, O Holy Spirit, in all we say or think or all that we do this and every day until he comes again. <laughs>